Someone you trusted told you to shut up, now there's a pain in your gut you can't get rid of. No one heard your screams when you were nine. Your bad dreams filled your summertime. So you don't always show your sweet side. You don't always show your sweet side. You don't always show your sweet side. You got a sweet side, baby. You're tough as nails and you keep your chin up. You never feel like you're good enough. You've had the blues ever since you were six in your little tennis shoes and your pickup sticks. You've been screamed at and kicked over and over. Now you always feel sick. You can't keep a lover. Every Christmas there were presents to unwrap of the things that you'll witness when you were five and a half. So you don't always show your sweet side. You don't always show your sweet side. You don't always show your sweet side. You got a sweet side, baby. I've seen you in the kitchen cooking me supper. I've listened to you bitching and I've watched you suffer. I still love you, baby, because I know you don't mean to do the cruel things you do. I've seen you sewing buttons on your shirt. I've seen you throw it up when your stomach hurt. I stick by you, baby, through thick and thin, no matter what kind of state you're in, because I've seen your sweet side. I've seen your sweet side. I've seen your sweet side. I've seen your sweet side, baby. You got a sweet side. He's just tired. He's fabulous. He's just had a lot of gluten. He's got that it's gluten intolerant. So everybody, pardon him. Sorry. When people are always like, I have a gluten allergy. That's why I've been so crabby and tired and weird for the last 12 years. <laughs> I'm not eating gluten or anything. I'm just going to sit at a table while you guys are all eating and just sit there. And I don't have any food. It's not an eating disorder. I've got gluten intolerance. <laughs> My sponsor made me sing that song, by the way. <laughs> um, I also want to give an apology right away, and um, I thank you for being so patient with me by um, staying calm when I said McCall's. In the, the call. <laughs> you are good. You to not just go like. I mean, or recalls, I was like, what else is there? Is it Main Street or Mayeen? <laughs> I'm like, in the middle, is it Houston or Houston? I was like, what is it? What's next? Um, I got the Boise down. No, nah, no, nah, this. Boise? Boise. I, uh, my second husband, I met him, um, in, uh, we met each other in Seattle, and uh, Jeff, and we were, uh, we were, towards the beginning of a relationship, we were going on a jog together, and this was back in the early days when he pretended he did things like that with me. And uh, we were going on a run, and we were running past this uh, golf course, and I let uh, Jeff get way ahead of me because I was trying to let out a little, like, girly fart while he was ahead of me. Just like a, <laughs> a, little, a little heart, a little pink heart. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I'll just do anything, anything. I thought, I don't want him to see that chickadee, and so I'll just let him get ahead. And so I let it out. And then as soon as I, 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 I could tell he heard it, because he whipped his head around. And he goes, oh, yeah, right? And I was like, what? Oh, I, I thought you just said, wow, about the golf course. And I'm like, you just thought, he thought that I was, I was like, wow. I'm like, you just talked to my front? Like, we're so close now? That you're like, oh, my God. But I was like, oh my god, he's talking, my bodily functions, we're so close. I was laughing so hard at that. I know a fart is kind of a lowbrow humor thing to do. Nothing, it seems way below my level. But I, um, I thought it was so funny at the time, and that became our go-to. We, um, at the, the 13 years we're together, we never stopped doing that sort of, where I was like, wow, wow. Every time I said, wow, or we'd be like, I love you. Like, <laughs> I want to ask you a thing that forms community and family. And that's how we find family. A, B, C, D. Oh, that's perfect. Um, it's way better. I took a nap in between the acts. I feel better. 
So I, um, uh, so we were together for uh, quite a while, and um, we um, it were very. Uh, both of us went to theater school, so our favorite thing to do was be very dramatic with one another. We had a lot of very intense. Um, fights and emotions and everything was really big and you know because we uh, well we're, I used to say we fought like Sid and Nancy but I can't say that anymore because the main component with Sid Vicious and Nancy was the heroin that kind of changes the story there wasn't heroin involved with us but there was everything was always like oh my god you're you're killing me you're killing me and he'd be like I can't breathe I literally can't breathe I can't breathe like our fights always got so big like sobbing on the carpet we're like I swear to God I'm numb I'm numb inside I can't trust anybody he's like I can't trust anybody. I grew up in Brooklyn. I'm like, I'm adopted. I'm like, <laughs> so, you know, and because he went to Juilliard, you know, his emotions were like, to the back row of the auditorium. <laughs> and I was, you know, I was like one year of theater school, so I get kind of like emotional and I forget my place. I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 I I, uh, but it was very intense, and we liked it. I actually think it kind of brought us together. We'd always sort of rebonded after these. You know, we'd be <laughs> crying, like listening to Patty Griffin. We'd sit around listening to this, our favorite um, um, uh, singer songwriters, Patty Griffin. And we'd listen to her songs, and we didn't just appreciate her songs. We were like, we'd cry as we listened to them. Like, she's trying to kill us. <laughs> she's trying to kill us. <laughs> so profound. And uh, so you get a little idea of it. Well, it, that, it, 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 um, it lightened up a bit after I had uh, my, our son, Leo. Like, I didn't want to be that intense once I had a kid. I was like, okay, let's chill out and the like, no, hey, you're killing me. And I'm a mother, for fuck's sake, come on. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, and it, it did, well, I did, I stopped the fighting, but the guy, you know, it's different. Jeff didn't go, come to that meeting, he missed that one. <laughs> because he was still, he'd still be like, you know, why don't you believe in me? And I'd be like, shh, do, do, do. You know, and, and he so I think it's so hard for men because they don't hormonally go through it. So they're sort of like, you said nothing would change. Well, I hate this shit. Um, we know it's like that, but I think it's hard for, you know what I mean? Like women immediately get it because I was like, I'm glad I don't need to go to parties. This is really all I want to do is to sit on a pillow. Like, this is my baby. And he's just like, oh, because uh, he's still on out there and doing stuff. Um, that's not completely fair, actually. I, I, um, I, but who cares? You don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fact checking all of a sudden. I'm like, that didn't actually happen. Oops. Okay, rewind. Is Jeff here? No, the gunshot. So I should check my commander when I feel like, Jeff, I'm gonna look her here. Here's not. Here we go. Anyway, yeah, I sort of told her weird that was like a non truth. Um, okay, so I have the baby, calm down a bit. Jeff decides he wants to be a stay-at-home dad, and I thought that was amazing for me, for me and for uh, uh, Leo. The fact that his dad was going to be there, and Jeff, um, because his career had sort of started to, to wane a bit, so he wanted to do it. Um, so like he said, he wanted to. He said it. He said I wanted to do it, and he made a big show about how much he enjoyed it. And um, and every time I worried that maybe I'm like, does maybe it's hard to be at home all the time and not be out in the world as much, not working as much. And he would insist. He's like, no, I love it. I love my life right now. I love Leo. I love my. I mean, he was going on these bike rides all the time. He's like, I love my bike rides. I love beer. And that would kind of be the end of the list. And like, and you love. <laughs> and, he would be, and I actually thought, like, I don't care. I don't even make. Uh, I don't have to be on the list. I'm so happy that he's willing to do it. I thought it was a huge sacrifice to make. And I would get worried, like every time the Juilliard alumni letter would arrive, I'd be like, uh oh, I hope it's not the letter that he's gonna be like, oh my god, I could have been somebody, you know, like that pushes them over the edge, like Laura Linney accepts another award, or whatever. Um, so, it, but he seemed to be fairly happy. But it, um, as the as the first year of Leo's life, uh, seemed more and more stressed out. Uh, Jeff did. He got more and more sort of um, easily, easily angered, let's say. And um, he, uh, uh, but I didn't, again, it wasn't, you know, wouldn't take the, wouldn't take the bait. He it got to the point where um, I was at a wedding, um, and he saw me, I mean, ceremony of lies, I was at a ceremony of lies, and uh, <laughs> he, he, um, he, he busted me, um, a, a rap came a rap song, a ludicrous rap, like hip hop song came on, and I was over there, I was like dancing with a group of guys, they were gay, 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 gay. It was a, just a big gaggle of gays, I swear. Okay, but I, but I was like, and I'm like, no, I'm like, you know, bump in that, run it in that pole, 
whatever, being stupid, and a white lady rapping, her, and, and Jeff got really upset with me to a point where I was like, what's that about? He goes, you know what, it's a bit much, Lauren. Somebody thinks there's a, fem you're a feminist, and you're saying, you know, you're sinking along to this, like, oh, bitches and hoes, bitches and hoes, and I'm like, no, the proper thing is like, bitch, gonna be my hoe. And I say it right. You know? <laughs> now, you're, now you're insulting ludicrous, and I won't stand for that. <laughs> And he was very, he's so turned off with the fact, he gets, and it's not like him, I was like, so prudish. I go, what do you, I'm not, I wasn't doing anything. He's like, oh, the way you were dancing, he's like, oh, is that? I'm like, wow, okay, pastor, so you're like, like, what happened? <laughs> and he, um, and so, and I get this irritating little white lady breath, there's that. Um, so, and so I get, it started, started, these fights were starting out of nowhere, and he seemed a little, it started to get a little, and then I started thinking, man, maybe a man does need a job, like, I hate to be like that, but I was like, maybe, man, I gotta work, man, I gotta feel like man, you know, so I felt like, do I need to, like, like give him some tasks, like, hey, Jeff, move those bricks over there, that's right, you can do it, oh, done that, oh, now move them back over there, come on, you know, yeah, that's right, put it, oh, end of the day, now move them back there again, Tomorrow, right, move over there, you can do it, you did it, didn't you? So anyway, I, um, I think I made my point. Um, <laughs> said, well, the bricks over there. Okay, I'm um, over there. I'm over there. I'm over there. Um, just gave a sense of purpose, but he didn't have that. Uh, so he's getting more like, as he said, more stressed out. I felt by things. Um, I started to uh, um, it, the things came to a. Um, the, uh, I was going to say this is where I would say the penultimate moment, but I, I misused the word. The other night during the show, I said it was the penultimate moment, and Brady so kindly pointed out after the show, he's like, oh, I don't think that word means what you think it means, the penultimate. And so, and then that song, I was like, oh, and done? And he's like, no, it's like the one before. And I was like, okay, Mr. Like, I'm like, okay, well, then, you know, that it's not always, you know, that, that shirt looks, what, what does he always say? Does the shirt look good on me? Like, you look good on me. Don't look good on me. Or something, no, it isn't. What's the thing about like, Superman does good? Do you know what I mean? Oh, you're too, okay, you weren't even like, you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know the right one. Okay, we're always trying to call out who the other one's dumber. We're always like, that no word don't mean it. You're so dumb. He's like, you're so dumb. You said that. We're always having fights about different. Anyway, I'll tell you guys about it later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too dumb to even explain how dumb we are. I'm not so dumb. Like, what's that thing you always say? Because we misuse the words about, like, he did this good. Oh, I did it good. Like, I did that good. That's right, okay, that's what you say. God is dumb. Anyway, I just think it's hilarious if we're like Texas and Indiana. We're both just like, that ain't right. Well, you ain't right. You got like teeth. Well, you stupid. Okay. <laughs> but it wasn't the penultimate moment. Okay, back to the story. There are parents. Mary, parents, friends. No. Um, I was, uh, 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 so the moment, the sort of the, the moment where I was like, oh, uh, trouble, Will Robinson, trouble. I woke up all the night and, um, uh, 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 Jeff was not in bed next to me. And that wasn't necessarily trouble. I mean, he was allowed to move about freely. <laughs> oh, I told you. Oh, he's got to get a meeting tonight. Like, but I, um, he was like, in the middle of the night, I told him, it makes you feel weird. Um, no, but I, I got up, and it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, and I walk into the living room. All the lights are out. He's sitting in the dark. He's watching The Walking Dead with a big glass of whiskey, and he's wearing his sunglasses in the dark. <laughs> and I walked in, and it was, it was, I was like, this, there's a very dark <laughs> and I asked him, uh, I go, why are you wearing your sunglasses, Jeff? Uh, he's like, uh, so I can see the TV. I'm like, yeah, but they're, they're, they're prescription, Lauren. And I'm like, oh, dumb. <laughs> <That> ultimate. <laughs> and I was like, and from that point on, uh, he started wearing his sunglasses constantly, all the time. Every every day was just like, hey, who are you? Like, I try to have like a heart to heart. Like, okay, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm losing. Yeah, we're, we're on fight to get you back, Jeff. Like, but I was like, I feel like I can't get a hold of you. I don't. And I'm trying to have a heart to heart with like with Stevie Wonder. He's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I, and my neighbors were the ones started calling him Stevie Wonder, and I I was referring to him as the Hollywood asshole producer. Like, I feel like I was like asshole producer, just like, yeah, what does he want, Lauren? Okay, I'm like, I need to see your eyes. Let me to the soul. Let me the soul. And so he's wearing, wearing those all the, all the time. And I uh, got to the point where I, um, I was telling people too, I felt like I was living in a Raymond Carver uh, short story, that it seemed like he was um, unhappy. And so I was trying to figure out what was going on, but again, I didn't know. And I finally said to him, and I was just kidding. I, I said, I go, well, you see, I'm not just kidding, I'm just testing, that's it. Oh, that's what women do. I'm like, what do we do? Are we kidding? No, we're mean, I'm trying to test you. <laughs> and, I, and I go, I feel like you don't even want to be married or something, do you want, uh, sometimes, and he was like, do you, and as soon as I asked him, do you want to be married? And he was, and he goes, um, no, I don't think so. But thank you so much, it's working out really good. Okay, bye, he's gone. Okay, so it's not that quick. Or before I was like, let's talk about it. He's like, we're separated, yay. And he was immediately just happy as can be. Because, um, and, and every time I would see him after that, right, I'd be like, what's happened? He'd come in and be like, hey, psycho. Oh, and he had to remind him, like, oh, this is separate. Oh, I mean, 
how are you doing? Hold on, it's a weird time, okay, bye. <laughs> and that's like, and I uh, um, had no idea exactly what was going on, and obviously it was, 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 was awful, um, but, and I don't know, I still don't know exactly what went wrong, and I, I thought that maybe that, because um, I can't afford therapy when I'm on the road, so I thought I'd just do a show about it, and you guys know. I, um, <laughs> I, uh, my therapist charges, you know, I text him. No, I, uh, I, so, I don't actually don't want to go into the details exactly of what, what, what went down, okay? Because this is the point where I was like, do I tell them everything? But I get so sick of being so Jerry Springer all the time. And I know that it's, it's just starting to get gross, you know? That I am sort of like, I'm a mother, for fuck's sake. I gotta clean it up a little bit. And I, and I was thinking about, actually, when I read that book, Eat, Pray, Love, that Eat, Pray, Love by you know, Elizabeth Hildreth, and when I first read that book, I hated it. And uh, I, the reason I was so irritated by it was because the first chapter of this book, this woman is talking about um, her divorce. She just, but she won't go into any details. She doesn't feel that's necessary in respect to her, for her husband. And um, she just will say that there were two adults that went their separate ways, that's all. And then she goes on to Italy and she meets an Italian boy. Oh, she loves the food. And then she goes, she meditates and she drinks really a blue, blue sky. She sees it, she goes, she's the sky. And Julie Roberts walks in, it's a movie book. So they, I mean, it was just so clean and so careful and so like, for the masses, nothing too disgusting. You do not like her. Like she just kept herself so, <laughs> oh, I was so frustrated. Like I want to know the details. Nobody talks about marriage. Like what really happens? Like, what you do? I mean, did, was she like, I don't know, was her husband like, I said, eat this grapefruit, bitch! <laughs> 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 and I'm um, sure she won't say it, but she wants me, she's got a near, near time for that. Yeah, I know. So I was just, uh, but now I get it. I had a flash for her, uh, for her the other day where I realized I feel like I want to do the same things. Or I, don't, I don't have to go into all the very details anymore because I do have a kid. And I don't think that seems fair to him to be, you know, to be over, like, oh, 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 about everything. Um, uh, so I just, at this point, before I'm like, I'm just gonna leave it at the fact that we were two adults um, that went our separate ways. <laughs> oh, woman, you don't know me. You can bet that I know you. Everybody in this whole darn town knows you too. He had an affair at the babysitter. It's a long second. <laughs> I brought along your little babies Cause I wanted them to see The woman is burning down our family tree Pretty much enough, that's all. <laughs> oh, I didn't come to fight He was a better man I might But I wouldn't dare Bring out the baby's daddy at who we come to see. Not the woman that's burning down our family tree. Her daddy once was a good man until he turned 52. I'm that age. Take a look at her baby's face and tell me. Who loves who? I'm the fun one. <laughs> I brought along my old dog Charlie and some meals that's overdue. That job he's working. Uber, sometimes left. Hey, we need money too. Okay, I'm gonna say, I, I'm, uh, really quick, I'm gonna tell you this and I'm not, that'll be it. Just a little side note. Right, um, so I, what happened was, and I was going to change Chanel's name because I don't want to get, you know, she's a victim, the whole thing. And I thought, but Chanel, I was going to call her Simone, but I feel like once you say Simone, you might as well say Chanel. I'm the same little village there, Chanel. So I'm to show it Simone. Um, so I, I should call her Simone. So Chanel had been our, um, our babysitter for a long time. And uh, early on, when she was first uh, babysitting for us, um, she uh, had given me a coat of hers. And uh, this coat, I'd always complimented. It was like this fake uh, leather blue coat with a fake fur collar from like Forever 21 or something. Or Forever 51, I like to call it. <laughs> and and uh, she gave it to me one day. Uh, and I was like, why are you giving this to me? This is, don't you wear this all the time? She's like, yeah, but you always um, said how much you liked it. And so I just, I thought maybe you'd like it. 
And so I took it, and I thought, and part of me was like, is that appropriate that I'm taking, you know, like I'm, you know, 44 years old, I'm taking this 18 year old girl's coat, and I was like, oh, who cares? So I took the coat. All right, so fast forward now to uh, Jeff and I are separated. We're trying to be co-parents, you know, because that's the thing to do, of course. And so uh, he um, was in and out of the apartment a lot. Jeff would come and go. And at one point, he left his computer at the apartment. And the, his computer had once been mine. It was a, um, a hand-me-down electronic I had so generously given to him. <laughs> anyway. No, so he had my old computer, and I decided that I wanted to see what the oldest video was on the computer. And I'm, and listen, I believe in snooping when there's a medical emergency. <laughs> and there's a, there's a child at risk. You have to snoop. You know, if somebody's like, he's on a cliff, he's gonna fall, I better snoop. Uh, I, I have done that before, God knows. But this time, I actually wasn't. I was only trying to see if there's any videos on there of Leo that I wanted to have, you know, since maybe, the, you know, what, who knows I'd see the computer again. So I go on there, and I'm looking, I'm trying to see what the oldest video was. And I, uh, the first thumbnail I see, it's a little tiny thumbnail, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh my god, it looks like, it looks like a naked girl on a table. I'm like, oh my god, she should use coasters on that table. <laughs> so anyway, that's the end of the story. No, um, um, but I, I was like, oh my god, that, and it I'm like, that looks like Chanel. It looks like our babysitter. And my first thought was, like, oh god, she probably does porno, which is awful. But I was like, oh, California, oh, poor thing. And, and I wasn't even that shocked. That's what's so sad. I was like, oh, here we go, pornography. Oh god, I gotta help her get out of that. You know, and I was like, oh, it's awful. And I click on it, and she's talking to the camera, and she's, uh, she's like, oh, Jeff, remember the time that, and I stopped, and I'm like, Oh, wow, that is so weird. I mean, what Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, G-E-O-F-F? -F? I don't know who she's talking to. I'm like, you don't know I me. Mean, every asshole I know is named Jeff. Who is she? I was, I was so like, yeah. well, that's thing's not happening. It's not happening. And I play a little bit more, and she's giving more information and talking. And she's basically like, oh, Jeff from 1129 Lincoln Boulevard, Santa Monica. And I'm like, well, it's a big building. I don't know everybody. No, oh, is that name Jeff in the building? It's so weird. I was like, Ugh. well, I finally get it. And I realized that what is happening and what I'm seeing, I'm like, oh my God. And then I think, okay, this, this is it. I now have the self-righteous rage moment that I have been waiting for my entire life. I'm like, oh, wait, I get to boil the rabbit. I get to take the beautiful moment and fire. I can take a baseball bat and just like, drown, drown, drown. And everyone would be like, go, sister, you go. And I can finally do it. And But, but Leo was in the room. And so, so I was like, I have this. And I, I, I look over on the coat rack and I see that coat that she had given me. I'm like, oh my God, that coat. I'm like, that's why she, oh. And I go over, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take that coat and I'm gonna get a knife out of the kitchen. I'm gonna go in the alley and I'm gonna shred that coat. Uh, and I, I go um, over and I take it off the hook. And um, it's got this kind of like cool, like faux fur collar thing. And I thought, oh, you know, it's a cute coat. <laughs> He was a better man, I might, but I wanted dirty my hands on trash like him. Bring out the baby's daddy, that's who we come to see. Not the woman is burning down our family tree. It's burning down on a family tree. the babysitter be like okay that'd be awful anyway um, <laughs> it'd be so embarrassing really I'd, that woman and I'd be like where were you uh, why are you living in Los Angeles you idiot so I'd say that person Brady I'm not talking to you sorry Brady's really gotten a little sure of himself on stage and I apologize for this so, uh, he's, really, he's got a little job to, oh look the way he's standing no, no, okay. <laughs> And the real problem why it's become this monster, you see, is because after shows, things have been happening. Let me just warn you um, that if it happens again, he's out of the he's out of the band. Because people come up to him, they're just like, "Oh my gosh, you have to let Brady sing a whole song. His voice is so pretty." And I'm like, "Okay, you just lost Brady's job." <laughs> <laughs> Any more compliments? I'm like, oh, no, it's how I said hi. I'm like, Brady's sick. No way. <laughs> I think his voice is so damn pretty. Buy a CD. He's got CDs. Super overpriced, but whatever. 
I know, 10 bucks. How much does it cost to really get them? You know what I mean? Who am I being so mean? I'm sorry. Goodbye, CD. Um, there's, uh, there's, no, they're, they're, all, they're awesome, the CDs. I just, <laughs> It's not about, like, I don't care if everybody doesn't love me. They should also love you because you're so sweet. Okay. Um, you don't know any dirt on him, right? You may know stuff about him that maybe you wouldn't like about him, okay? The same. Let's keep going. All right, we now come to the, we now come to the, um, uh, the part of the show. Uh, now that I've shown what a good, loving heart that I have. You look really cute on stage. Um, that's what somebody told me to tell you. Um, where I, it's called Help Me, Weedy M. Kenobi, You're My Only Hope, where I answer your questions about love and relationships. So thank you for letting me um, change your lives. Thank you. <laughs> At first I was afraid, I was petrified, kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. And then I spent so many nights thinking how you had done me wrong. I grew strong, I learned how to carry on. Lauren. What if you love your pog more than your husband? Oh, that's a dog. A pog. For a second, I was like, is that a new, is that an Apple product? Is there a pog? I don't have a pog. Oh my God, I bet they do have their pog more than their husband. Is it like a new kind of, is it a new phone? Is there an i7 answer? Uh, that's my mind. What if you love your dog more than your husband? Well, that's just, um, I guess that's, um, what does that mean? It means you, um, do you have a problem? Oh, somebody's getting sure of themselves in the audience. <laughs> they have a husband? Well, maybe they have, um, I'm assuming they have a, a, a really awesome dog and a shitty husband, so it makes sense. Okay. Probably um, would have awful husbands love their dogs more. I love, I love my, um, uh, my sock drawer more than my husband. So. Um, is there such a thing as love at first sight? Um, no, there is such a thing as mental illness, though. Um, is it true? Well, thank you for asking. Um, uh, uh, Lauren, is it true that what the world needs now is, is love, sweet love? Oh. Um, and is it really the only thing that there's too little of? Um, well, there's somebody that can't think for themselves and will never be in a relationship. Okay. And so you're back from outer space. I just came here to find you here without that look upon your face. I should have paid it to you, leave your key up here. Should have changed your fucking locks. I'd have known for just one minute. You'd be back to sit on my rocks. <laughs> nice the words open. Lauren, and again, thank you so much, you guys. I was kind of vulnerable. It's a, um, being open with strangers. Um, what should I do about an idiot ex-husband? Oh my God, that's a really good question. Um, I think what you should do is um, just keep talking about him all the time and, um, and really make it a thing. Like when people are like, oh, it's time to move on. Be like, oh no, I'm not moving on. No fucking way. Let's go look at this thing. <laughs> and just keep talking about it. When people are like, oh, well, he's living his life now. Be like, no, he won't. Not if I have anything to do with it. Come on. And just keep going on and on and make sure you always remember the stuff that you hated about him. And just make sure, and don't let it die. Don't let it die. Because the minute you forget all the shit he did to you, then, it, then what are you going to talk about? You know, you got nothing. Nothing to pick up. Oh, so now go. Walk out the door. Don't turn around now. You're not welcome anymore. Weren't you the one who tried to bring me with desire? Don't you think I crumbled? Laws. Oh, I think we've got a screenplay writer out there. Right. What's your bad word? No, um, how do you handle, the, handle them? Um, uh, let them know that they're the, I don't monster in-laws. Oh, your in-laws and stuff. Um, I guess do what my parents did, um, did where they, um, they moved out of a house that had plenty of guest rooms and would have been very welcoming for everybody and moved into a condo. There's no, there's no room for, that's, that's only two people. It's like a one room condo. They're like, we'd love you to have you stay, but we don't, we don't have any bedrooms. Bye. Like, you know. So they to live in a really small place. Or maybe just say every time they come into town, rent a hotel room and be like, this is where we live ever since we had the fire. <laughs> <laughs> we really liked it here, you know what I mean? Office all the time, all the ice in the morning. What's your beverage of choice? What's your beverage of choice? Oh, I think somebody wants to give me a creepy stalker oh, gift. Drink. Oh, drink. Beverage of choice again. What, what's happening? Are you okay? Something's choking back there. Um, my beverage of choice is, of course, water. <laughs> I just think my body asked for it, and so I give it to it. Um, 
Uh, why do people think the French know so much about love? I don't know. Let ask this Francophile over there. Do not speak French to Brady, or else the next thing you know, you got a guitar player following you, going like, ooh, je t'aime, je t'aime. Um, how do you keep things hot after 20 years? You cannot. Lord, my teenage brothers. Love lives are more rocking than my own. Should I worry? Um, you should worry that your teenage daughters are <laughs> so the next will be your, your grandkids in a couple of years. Or, but it is love an illusion? Absolutely. <laughs> there it's going too. And where why are your elbows so red? Who the fucking kidding are they red? Are they red? Super red? Okay, now I'm going to talk with the audience. They look really red, do they? Okay. Um, they look pink. Um, because I was told that was good luck. All right. Um, um, and the other one said, um, Lauren, why do you have all those lines on your face? Why are you always talking? Why don't you sit down and somebody else talk? Lauren, why are you, why are you so old? What happened to your neck? Lauren, why is, why is the skin falling away from your bones like a chicken? Why are you always divorced? I will survive. Yeah, as long as I know how to love, I'll know I'll be alive. I've got all my life to live. I've got all my love to give. I will survive. I will survive. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you so much for letting me do that. Uh, 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 that <laughs> Jesus. Um, either that or someone's with a vein in my head. There's one woman who she's like, can I touch that vein on the side of your head? Oh, I love it. And I was like, thank you. Is there any other medical problems I have you'd like to touch? It's not a medical problem. Um, just gross. So my mother, after um, this whole incident, my mom called me and said, Lauren, I, I hate to say this to you. I'm just going to let you know. I think that you need to uh, not have Chanel babysit anymore. I know that's hard. <laughs> I'm sure not. She's here right now. I don't want to hurt her feelings. And so I just, so I've been grinning and bearing it. Hi, Chanel. I'm like, no, she's not babysitting anymore. I don't even have any girl babysitters anymore. I had a little PTSD. I had to take a little break from the, because all the, all the babysitters in LA are these actresses. They're also pretty. And I'd be showing them like things for Leo. I'm like, okay, so there's Leo's pajamas. And oh my God, hot all on your face. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, you'll thank me later. And then you'll have to go inside. And you'll have to like find out about who you are as a person. Maybe read a book. And then um, you'll be so happy about that. So you're welcome. Anyway, that's his pajamas. Um, so no, no girls for a while. I have one guy babysitter, Linus, and Linus is a little like, you know, I love kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I my brothers. Mm -hmm. Okay, go far in Leo's face then. Um, and when the, the whole thing went down, Leo was the first, he just started preschool. And he was uh, the first kid, and the whole year he was in preschool, we were the only family that was divorced. And Leo would say stuff to me. We'd come home and be like, I'm the only divorced kid. And, oh, I, I, I so much wanted to, I'm like, hey, wait, wait till first grade, buddy. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm schooling them. i will be like, no, you're going to be an first and see how that goes. I'm like, you're going to be an expert, believe me. Everybody will be coming to you. And, he, and I, I didn't want everybody to know what was going down because uh, I didn't, because it was so embarrassing. I just was so, it was like, I just, I didn't want to even say the sentence and have to like, anyway, I just found it very like awful. And, and then I found out later that everybody assumed that I'd been the one who had broken it up because I seemed so strong. I seemed so okay. You have a deep voice and you're a little pushy and suddenly you're, everyone thinks you're just okay. And, and I guess uh, Jeff would be coming to drop off Leo at preschool and like, would be sobbing like Juilliard, like, like signing Leo and like, hey, where's the pencil? Ah, ooh, I can't hold my pencil. Ah. You know, and I can then just like, oh, I'm gonna sign it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people were saying like, his moms were like, you just always seem so okay. We thought that maybe you tossed Jeff aside because your career was going so well. And I was like, yeah, I hope you think that about, that wouldn't, what? What a nightmare. I'm like, oh, I just got a job. Sorry, I need a taller husband. I'm sorry. Bye. Next. <laughs> like, no. Anyway, sorry. Not your, you don't have to worry about that. Um, so, the preschool, when I, I also didn't want to tell them because I had a, a reputation at the preschool. Not a reputation, it's too strong, but I was, it's a co op, and you have to volunteer. And the very beginning of the year, um, I was volunteering and uh, standing next to another volunteer mom. And the kids were doing some song or game. But they were all laying on the floor in a circle on their stomachs like this with their arms around each other. And I leaned over to the mom and I was like, oh my God, it looks like Jones Town. And I said, I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, I wish I could say that. And she goes, I wish you had neither. And the rest of the day, I was so, I hated to say it. I was like, oh God, ah. And I kept going up to her trying to apologize. I go, I just, 
that she's like cleaning out some paint jars or something. I'm like, I just want to say again, I'm so sorry that I said that about the judge. She said, please don't say it again. It's fine. <laughs> I was like, oh God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so I had that kind of permutation, which was awful. And they, and they um, when I did finally tell them about what happened, I didn't, I didn't plan on doing it, and I was at the, um, the playground, and oh my god, it was actually so much more fun than I thought it was, I mean, fun, that's pretty wrong. Well, it was kind of fun, because as I told them, the, the, the looks of horror on their faces was, and I, now I understood the whole concept of dumping on somebody, because you know, you feel lighter and they feel awful. Because every time I was like, I'm like, you, I remember Chanel the babysitter, and they're like, what? Yeah, I remember her, oh no, 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 not her, I'm like, oh yeah. It could happen to you. <laughs> it could happen to any of us. And I was like, ha ha, that's so light and freaky. And they're like, oh. <laughs> Let me tell you all a story about a Harper Valley widow wife who had a teenage daughter who attended Harper Valley Junior High. Well, her daughter came home one afternoon and didn't even stop to play. And she said, Mom, I got a note here from the Harper Valley PTA. Harvard for Harvard. Well, the note said, Miss Johnson, you've been wearing your dresses way too high. And it's reported you've been drinking and having a run around with men and acting wild. And we don't believe you ought to be a bringing up your little girl this way. And it was signed by the secretary Harper Valley PTA. Well, it happened that the PTA was going to meet up that very afternoon. And they were sure surprised when Mrs. Johnson wore her mini skirt into the room. And as she walked up to the blackboard, I can still recall the words they had to say. She said, I'd like to address this name of Harper Valley PTA. <laughs> well, there's Bobby Taylor sitting there, and sometimes he's asked me for a date. Hey, baby. And Mrs. Taylor she seems to use a lot of ice whenever he's away. Scandry Doodle, Scandry Doodle. And Mr. Baker, can you tell us why your secretary had to leave this town? <laughs> and Mrs. Widow Jones, we told you to keep her window shades up, do come in the down. Oh, yeah. And Mr. Kelly couldn't be here, his teacher laid at Kelly's bar again. That's right. And if you smell Shirley Thomas' breath, you'll find she's had a little nip of gin. It's an alcoholic. <laughs> and then you have to nerve to sit there and tell me you think his mother, I'm not sick. But this is just a little pain place. You're a Harper Valley hypocrite. Well, I won't put you on because it really did. It happened just this way. The day my mama stopped it to the Harper Valley PTA. Ooh, I spit. The day my mama stopped it to the Harper Valley PTA. Harlot. Props. So, um, that was, um, I don't give credit to any of the people who wrote those songs because I actually wrote all of them in between in the intermission, so. <laughs> you can see why I'm single. I give credit to nobody. I'm like, I did it. Um, uh, I, after the, the, the divorce, I was um, in that state of shock where everything, I was just like in grief, like, I'm oh, and like, I'm divorced twice. Like, uh, of course, every person I can play about being divorced twice to is like, well, so what? And then like, I've been divorced three times. I'm like, well, you're awful. Um, <laughs> um, and the next week, I will be. Um, I was uh, um, having to sort of carry on, of course. I, I had life moves forward. And I was in an audition. And um, uh, at the audition, 
uh, for, you know, as you know, uh, yes, yeah, so life moves forward. Wrigley Gum commercials still have to be made. And I walked into the, um, the casting office, and I was wearing these fake diamond earring things um, from anthropology or something. And the casting director sees them, and she's like, oh, wow, Lauren, wow, look at those. Those are great. Well, somebody really loves you, huh? And I was so like, oh, oh no. No, it turned out that he didn't love me. <laughs> comma, comma, down to be do down down. Comma, comma, down to be do down down. Comma, comma, down to be do down down. Break it up is hard to do. Don't take your love away from me. Comma, comma, down. Don't you leave my heart in misery. Come on, baby, I start anew. Cause breaking up is hard to do. These white spots appeared all over my body. Right, this was right when I thought maybe I'd start dating. And I thought, well, I'm not so depressed anymore. And I look, I've got these white circles all over me. And I thought, oh, great, I got ringworm. Awesome. So I go to the dermatologist, and she's like, oh, no, no, that's not ringworm. That's no big deal. What that is, Laura, it's just like a fungus. And I'm like, oh, God. She's like, oh, no, it's um, so, um, usually from not showering. I'm like, okay, is it going to be uh, and she goes, um, it's no, all it is, it's like, it's like, it's like athlete's foot, you know, but just all over the body. <laughs> Remember when you held me tight, and you kissed me all through the night. Come on, baby, let's start anew, cause breaking up is hard to do. Uh, there's a pill I could take for four days, and that pill would clear it right up. The only thing was that I need to be very careful not to drink the alcohol, because uh, that would affect the efficacy. And I asked her if maybe there was another option. <laughs> and she said, Lauren, if you can't go four days without drinking alcohol, we need to have a different discussion. <laughs> they say they're breaking up, it's hard to do. I know, I know that it's true. Don't say that this is the end. Instead of breaking up, I wish that we were making up again. There's an ointment, there's an ointment you could use, she suggested. Uh, and she said, with the ointment, what you want to do is apply it in the evening before you go to bed. And uh, I would ask your husband or your partner to apply it on your back for you, because you've got a lot of the fungus down the middle of your back. And I told her that I don't have a husband to put ointment on me anymore. <laughs> oh, well, you know what I tell um, a lot of my senior citizen patients? Um, I suggest to them that they can take the ointment and just you can put it on like a door jam. I beg of you, don't say goodbye. Won't you give our love another try? Come on, baby, let's start anew. Cause breaking up is up to do. Come on, come on, down to me, do down, down. Come on, come on, down to me, do down, down. Come on, come on, down to me, do down, down. Breaking up is hard to do. sadness and the fungus cleared up. I, I started dating like crazy. I just went nuts where I was like, I'm going to go out all the time, all the time. And I'd, I'd have a moment where I'd be like, my God, I think I've been alone for five minutes. Whoa, better remedy that. And, blah, 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 blah. and I was dating, I didn't want anybody normal. If any guy was like, I'm just one of the good guys that got away. I'm like, move aside. There's a guy in the back with sex with his couch. I'm that guy. Ah, hi. I got nothing normal. I don't want anything where I have to like, I don't want to feel anything. I just want to be like, keep going. Just distract me, distract me. And I was, but then every time I'd be out with anybody more than two dates, I would never really have some kind of crazy breakdown over nothing to start sobbing. Because I was so putting on this like, oh, I'm really not, I'm a divorcee, crazy divorcee, I'll do anything, I'm just out there. And then something would happen like they, they want me to pass the salt or something. And I was like, here's the salt, I'm like, I know what I'm like, I don't really want to love me. What? <laughs> and, then, and then I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't do this. But please apologize, you're your girlfriend and your wife. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to make this all work. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just Anyway, so I was so just out there going nuts with it, and I ended up getting a um, 
a kidney infection, <laughs> because I'm disgusting apparently. And I was trying to go over the stress theory, because my, my doctor goes, oh, not necessarily, sometimes it's from stress. And I called my friends to let them know that that awful fever I've been having was a kidney infection, and then it had been brought on from stress, and they said, nope, that's not stress, that's a whore's disease. <laughs> and I was like, that seems a little much for everything I've been through. And they're like, okay, whore, call me when it clears up. Um, and like, they said, it's not always from that. They're like, yeah, it is, your doctor's saving your feelings because you look fragile, so he's lying to you. But yeah, see you later, whore. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I'm still sick. <laughs> or not, can you please bring me some soup? <laughs> At a certain point, um, when I first started not feeling very well, I had a date. I was still going out on dates. I'm like, I have a fever. I just don't want to be alone. And so I had a date with this English guy. Um, and uh, uh, he kept uh, moving the time. Like, I, he kept calling and saying, no, sorry, darling girl, be another hour, sorry. And finally, I was like, well, I'm not going to be treated this way. Like, I've got, you know, morals. I'm going to go on, okay, Cupid, then. You know. So I, 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 I canceled my date with this guy. And I decided that I still wanted to go out that evening because I was because I was already was all done up. You know, I had my prosthetic nose on, and you know, my, my wig on. And I was I'm like, I'm trying to do it. I feel like I'm like, I was tootsie. I was like, I go out as tootsie all the time. And my head, anyway, you know, so I, since I was all done up in my mind, I was like, well, I, I still want to go out. And plus, I don't want to be alone. And so I, uh, but I wasn't aware of that at the time, by the way. Um, I just thought, I was like, yeah, I'm glad of energy right now. That's all, I'm just ready to go out. I don't have any fear of, of um, the voices in my head. So I went on okay, Cupid. And I'd already started a little bit of a profile. I'm like, only gonna go on there tonight and just see what's going on. I went on there and there I saw Brady's profile. And I thought, oh my god, why? And I was also looking for a guitarist. So I was like, oh perfect. You know. Okay. Um so I and I and his pictures are all like every picture of him is just like, no, no, no. It's so like normal, like, mm, like there's Brady in Paris, mm, you know, Brady, Brady sitting at the coffee shop, mm, you know, Brady on course, mm, Brady at Christmas. Mm. And just like, mm, mm, mm. I'm like this guy's not and, and so then, and you know, different, age, different pictures of you at different ages. You're like, Brady at 16, Brady at 19, Brady at 30. And so I thought, what is that? and then the other thing it did is I looked on, there's a question on the, you know, this questionnaire, they've been trying to make sure you have a good match. And one of the questions is, how much alcohol do you drink? And I'd seen a lot of different profiles, and most of the guys were like, I drink two or four drinks a week, or I drink, seldom do I drink, only on the holidays, only when it's appropriate. And, um, and Brady's, I've never seen anybody answer it, I drink all the time, all the time, I'm so drunk, I'm drunk right now, what's the question? I'm drunk. So I thought, okay, so between that and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go, this guy seems like he's not looking for anything. I'm like, perfect. So I, I send him a message and I say, um, hey, do you wanna go out tonight? I'm just on okay keeper just for tonight and then I'm out of here. So if you wanna go out, you go out now. He goes, okay, that's fine. You wanna go out, let's meet. And I go, yeah, I do, but maybe not tonight. Probably not, fine, sorry. And I walked away and I was like, we'll be done with that. And then I come back and I'm like, thank you. And I go, okay, actually, if you wanna go out tonight, if you're ready the next hour, we can meet up. And he goes, I can do that. And I go, well, I can't. He goes, no, I can't. <laughs> Again, I'm like, hey, if you want to, you know, we can meet up some other time. And he goes, that's fine. You let me know when you want to get together. And I go, all right. Well, are you on the west side right now? And he goes, I am. And I go, well, that's good because we're not seeing each other, but it's good to know you're there. <laughs> and I go back again, like a crazy person. And I go, I know I'm seeming a little unstable, um, <laughs> but uh, do you want to meet? Um, uh, if you want to go out tonight, I'll meet you in like 10 minutes at the King's Head Pub. And so, if you want to do something, I'll see you there. <laughs> so bad It didn't matter what my friends would say I was gonna see you anyway I just wanna see you so bad I just wanna see you so bad You were staying in a big hotel I just wanna see you so bad I didn't know you very well I just wanna see you so bad We'd only talked on the telephone So bad. 
a man behind me on the drums. so much and I um I it seems a little like oh she must say this every time. Boy Boise is really is my is my go to town of I, I love being here. I love being able to perform here and give them the chance to work on and to be you know make a you know it's not always the most polished show. <laughs> and so but I appreciate just the chance of, um, of being able to be here. It's a little bit here. All right. There. God, can I be sincere with anybody? I will never know love. I get that right now. <laughs> I can't open up my heart to people. I do, I can't, I just want to do it privately when you guys are looking at me. I went, um, uh, so before we sing our last song, um, and he's taken, ladies, so stop asking me, all right? <laughs> Mr. Carol Brady. Um, um, uh, that, uh, do you want to break up? You want to be good? <gasps> when will we be married, Brady? When will we ever get married? Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, that'd be hilarious, like, yes, on stage, you're like, oh my God, we're just doing a wedding ceremony. Uh, like, number three! <laughs> Okay. Um, I went home recently and I said to my mother, why is it that you think, um, and I've, I've mentioned this before, but I, I was like, why is it that none of your daughters, um, none of us are married? Why are we all divorced and um, all, all three of us, um, what's wrong? Like, I'm like, what went wrong? And my mom goes, well, I'll tell you what, you're not the easiest people in the world to put up with, so probably that. <laughs> to raise a glass or two. Remember how we drank away the hours and dreamed of all the great things we would do. Those were the days, my friend, we thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance forever and a day. We'd live the life choose. We'd fight and never lose, for we were young and sure to have our way. Those were the days, oh yes, those were the days. I move, you move, just like that, but I move, you move, just like that, but I move, you move, just like that. Hell yeah, hey, 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 hey,
Yeah. <laughs> 